hometown of Bethlehem. justice and righteousness. Light the four candles of hope, peace, love, and joy. for God's shalom to be felt. We have waited with joy, celebrating the things God has already done. We have waited with love, awed by how God has shown love to us. We light this candle to celebrate the light God has sent into the world in the birth of Jesus. We now light the Christ candle. stable so long ago, your light shines out into every corner of the world. Help us to sing with the angels of the joy of your coming. Help us to live by your light, not only today, but throughout the whole year, so that tidings of peace and goodwill to all will truly transform everything. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Together let us pray. O God, our Father, whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds to him who is the Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now have the proclamation.
reading from the book of Isaiah. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give you your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see, your salvation comes, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 97, and the refrain is, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All, All the ends, ends of the earth have, have seen the salvation of our God. God. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are around about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. All, All the ends, ends of the earth have, have seen the salvation of our God. God. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. All, All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. The mountains melt, the melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous and give thanks to his holy name. All, All the ends, ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. A reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is he, he it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all inequity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is number 135, Shepherds in the Field Abiding.
be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the host and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to be, deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news, a great joy for all people. To you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who was the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and of earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the words of our mouths, meditations of our hearts, be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. As some of you may know, we moved to Halifax area from a small village called Edwardsville, outside Sydney. And the stars in Edwardsville, they shine brightly. There's no pollution in the air, no light pollution whatsoever. And when you look straight up at them on a warm summer night, the stars ignite as bright sparks piercing the darkness of the sky. And if you look patiently, you can see the Milky Way it's a swath of a paint, faint cloud flowing as a stream through space. The lights of the sky, the universe itself, extend on forever as an infinity pool, where horizon and sky are as one. A magical place, where there's no longer a distinction between time and space. It is perhaps there that you will find God. It is perhaps there that you will find eternity. 
Just imagine yourself traveling through space. You speed fast the star Vega, the constellation Hercules. You spiral outward through the Orion arm of the Milky Way into its fingers, past nebulae, and into the space of galaxies. You race infinitely faster than light toward the edge, but now the edge is obscured, only black, extending to black, galaxies distant, planets are now unimaginably behind you. And through this darkest night, even of your own soul, this darkest night, even to the soul of humanity, an even darker space looms unimaginably in your path. A black hole, darker than the black space that surrounds it. You can't actually see a black hole. You perceive it, you sense it, by the absence of matter, by the absence of light and time. And as you approach it, the black hole sucks you into itself. Its gravity bearing on you as chaos, you are spiraling downward into its center, and the hole swallows you eternally as into the abyss. The violence of the black hole is unimaginable. You are alone, and there is no hope. But there is hope. Here, in the blackness of your deepest loneliness, a star is shining. The awe-inspiring creator of this vast expanse of ever-expanding space is as close as the atoms that make up the hairs of your head. Eternity and time cease to exist. On Christmas Eve, in our terms 2,000 years ago, but in God's timelessness tonight, the Creator comes as a person, as a human being, to our remote planet to our lonely selves. You see, even time must account to God. For with us, God, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. Even light and dark must account to the great I Am. For with us, God, there's no distinction between light and dark. The night and the day are the same. Even distance and space must account to the Almighty, for with its God, the edge of the universe is at the tips of your fingers. The prophet Isaiah acknowledged the plight of God, ours and that of the human race. The people walk in darkness, and elsewhere, Deep darkness enshrouds the people, a black hole without hope. But the people who have walked in darkness have seen the great light. You see, God cares for us. He loves us. The cry of the newborn babe, God made flesh, God made human, proclaims that like our journey into space, into the deepest recesses of our soul, God is here, reaching out, loving us. You know, we thought we could save ourselves. They call the beginning of the 20th century the new century. Optimism abounded. We found ourselves at peace on the brink of scientific breakthroughs. There was nothing we couldn't do. We could fly to the sky. We could build skyscrapers. We could peer into galaxies. The 21st century even gave more marvels. But we awoke from that dream to the reality of two world wars, 
massacres in Cambodia and Rwanda, racial persecution, AIDS, COVID, and malaria epidemics, and macabre catastrophes of genocide and brutality. And it became apparent that we cannot save ourselves as we had imagined. And even now, prophets warn of a global environmental catastrophe. And although our education and scientific knowledge can help, we are still in need of more. We are in desperate need, for the dark night is black. We are hurtling through space, packs, galaxies, and nebulae at warp speeds towards black holes and a certain end, and we are sore afraid. We need a savior. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. As we look across the globe, humanity suffering from a global pandemic, people dying by the millions, a new black death, we feel so alone and tired. We grieve the loss of loved ones. We pray for deliverance. Our science will help, but the interior loneliness that needs a savior. God in the midst of us. God come to earth. For to you is born this day a savior. Light shines in the darkness. You see, God esteemed us worthy. And for us, a light shone in the darkness. Which is why the Savior beckons us out of our Christmas stupor of stuff and things and possessions and gadgets and glitz and glitter into a real faith, a true and living faith, a faith which is, allows you to touch something, someone, something you never touched before, and you see a light you've never seen before. And suddenly, there appeared the heavenly host of the shepherds, who began praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Can you hear this story afresh? From a different point of view, an incarnational point of view, where God comes to live amongst us. Bruce Springsteen put it this way. There are others who know about this miracle birth. The humblest of people catch a glimpse of their worth. For it isn't in a, isn't in a palace that the Christ child comes, but to shepherds and street people hookers and bums. And the message is clear, if you've got ears to hear, that forgiveness is given for your guilt and your fear. It's a Christmas gift you don't have to buy. There's a future shining in a baby's eyes. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. May we all this year have a real, meaningful, happy, and blessed Christmas. Amen. Let us confess our faith, our baptism, as we say. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now have the prayers of the people. In joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, Lord grant us peace. By the submission of the maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the River Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Izo, South Sudan, the Right Reverend John Karaboro Zawo, Faisalabad, Pakistan, the Right Reverend John Samuel, Falkland Islands, Parish of Falkland Islands, the Right Reverend Timothy Thornton, Diocesan Bishop. In our parish cycle of prayer, we remember Mickey and George, Brenda and Keith, Karen R., Paul and Eva, and their families. For the sick and for those who have asked to be prayed for, we remember Alma, Joan T, Dorothy P, Russell M, Helen, Father Elliot, Debbie, Melba, Marilyn K, George P, Doug, Ross, and Martin. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The hymn during the offertory and the preparation of the table, 139, the first Noel. Thank you. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, hear among us, and in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
receive the sacrament of the altar, we can make at home an act of spiritual communion, a prayer to be said during communion of the people. I would ask you to close your eyes, and as I pray this, pray it with me. In union, O oh dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father. Our desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate me from thee. Let me live and die in thy love. Let us pray together. <coughs> Father of all, tonight you've united earth and heaven in sending your Son to take our human nature. May we who have tasted heavenly things share in the life of his eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn, 119, Silent Night. serve the Lord.